Hey guys, thanks for joining me. Today at Scuba Tech, we're going to take an atomic first stage. We're going to totally disassemble it. We're going to ultrasonically clean all the parts. Then we're going to reassemble it with the new service kits. Make sure that it's ready to go for our next dive. Stay tuned. Don't go anywhere. Hey guys, my name's Angel and this is my shop in the Florida Keys. disclaimer before getting started the scuba regulator is not a diy project it must be serviced by a certified manufacturer's authorized service center you cannot do this at home please don't try it i know you might want to do it but don't do it please bring it to your local store your local authorized dealer let them service the regulator for you now for the disassembly of the z2 first stage i loosened a lot of the parts and i removed all the port plugs, took the o-rings off, just in the interest of saving some video time. Let's start by removing the yoke screw. A lot of corrosion on there. That corrosion is going to all come out as soon as I do the ultrasound and cleaning. From here it goes to the basket. In the basket, from the basket, it goes to the ultrasound and cleaner. Next I'm going to remove the yoke retainer. Again, I loosened these parts. Uh, these parts are harder than what they look like to come off. Okay, here is the yoke, and you can spin it around. You can see some of that corrosion underneath here along the internal walls of the actual yoke. Oh, yeah, and you can see on the threads as well. Okay, to the basket. Uh, the yoke retainer. Here we have a star washer and a filter underneath the star washer. That has to come out. The filter is nothing, um, never gets reused. It always gets replaced. So we're just going to yank it out of there. Pull the star washer. That gets replaced. Place. There's your filter. You can see on the filter there's a lot of corrosion buildup. Toss that in the cup. Always use a little cup to toss the parts in. There goes the star washer. There's a little o-ring underneath the actual retainer that comes out and in the cup and now to the basket the rubber goods i never put the rubber goods inside the ultrasonic cleaner that i clean with warm soapy water and a brush so we'll set that aside next there's a cap on the bottom of the first stage i'm going to remove that there it goes see that uh corrosion that's around the bottom that's actually just dirt and salt build up that's going to be uh, clean with soapy water all right next let's take the cap off there we go once i take the cap off the next thing we're going to see is the piston and spring here in the inside of the cap you can see some corrosion there all right that to the basket Pulling the spring out, you're, you always want to be careful not to damage the actual tip of the spring. On the tip of the spring, you have a sealing surface that seats against the high-pressure seat. If that gets damaged, then you no longer have a good sealing piston, and you can have a lot of eye pressure problems, I, I, what we consider IP creep. Spring comes off and into the basket. Typically here, you find a washer or shim. See if I get it loose. Felt it come loose there. It's kind of a little stubborn. There it is. These shims, they are designed to increase or decrease IP on the first stage. If you add shims, it increases. If you remove shims, it decreases. They get replaced. We put them in the cup. Um, they're about 5 PSI per shim. 3 to 5 PSI, I believe, is what the increase is. Okay. On the base of the piston, we have a O-ring. See if I can get it pinched. There it goes. Pinch the O-ring so I can peel it off the piston. That gets replaced, so into the cup. The actual piston, I don't like to just toss the piston into the basket. I put it in this little clamshell basket so it protects it while it's inside the ultrasonic cleaner so no damage comes to it. On the body, you have a large O-ring there. Pinch that O-ring. That can come right off. Next, you have a large rubber seal that can come off and again this gets cleaned with soapy water and reused now for the bottom of the regulator there's a cap and this is a special atomic tool used to remove this cap 
there. Once it's broke free, you can undo it by hand. In this cap, there is a high pressure seat. I believe the material is Teflon. This is what the piston will make a seal against when inside the body. This is why if you have a damage, uh, any kind of damage to the tip of the piston, this will not seal well against this Teflon seat, and that's where it's gonna, you're going to have your IP problems. Okay, to remove the seat, all you need is some uh, high-pressure air. See the little hole in the bottom of the actual cap? You apply air there, and it pops the seat out. Right next to us, I have a little air chuck. There it goes. Pops the seat right out. That gets replaced. O-ring underneath the cap gets replaced. So the cap into the basket. Next, we have a spring, thin spring, small, much smaller than the first spring. This is the large spring that I removed, and now we have a much smaller, much thinner, uh, less torque on the spring. That one retains, if you look inside, I don't know if you can see it, there's a stainless steel washer, and underneath the washer there's going to be an O-ring and a white packing. This spring helps retain those parts in its place. We're going to put this little spring inside this clamshell basket. This O-ring can come out. That gets replaced. There it goes. All right. Next. Oh, look. here's a stainless steel washer. That just fell right out of the regulator. Let's see if I get the O-ring and the packing out as well. It's a little more stubborn. Let's see if I use this brass pick. Oh, I think I got it. There it is. And there's the O-ring. Okay, these three parts are very important. You have the stainless steel washer, you have an O-ring, and then you have the white packing. This is the order that it must be in. If it's reversed, uh, put in a different order, it's not going to work well. You're going to have issues with your high pressure pressure um, sealing on the first stage. So they must be in correct order. The stainless steel washer gets reused. So I'm going to put that in the clamshell for small parts so I don't lose it. O-ring, white packing. That gets replaced. Okay, I think this first stage body is ready for the cleaner. Uh, let's see. Let's see if it focuses in there. I think you can see a lot of this area here has a lot of corrosion. Ultrasonic cleaner will get rid of all that. All right, into the cleaner. Uh, port plugs into the cleaner. So we put this in. And the next thing is to turn on the button. This does make some noise, so I will take the camera off of this as soon as we get going. So let's take them out, put them into our water and baking soda, let them neutralize. All right, the parts have been soaking for about 10 minutes. Let's see what they look like. So far, they look pretty good. Yoke screw cleaned up really nicely. Not bad. The cap. Looks good. I like it. The body. Very nice. Cleaned up. Okay. The spring also uh, not bad. All right. We're going to let these parts air dry on this mat. And then we're going to start the assembly of the parts. It's very important that you let these parts air dry. If you don't let them air dry, you should blow dry them with um, some pressured air. Okay, here's the piston and the tiny little spring. Everything looks good. Now for the assembly. I went ahead and put all the uh, O-rings on the port plugs and put the plugs into the body, into the cap, just to save some time. And next, I'm going to show you the piston O-ring. I also replaced that to so also save time. And here are the three very important parts, stainless steel washer, O-ring, and packing. We're going to put that in the body now. The, this tool helps me put it in. You have the stainless steel washer and the O-ring and the packing. First, lubricate with crystal lube, either by tube, syringe, or in a tub. I have all three. I like to generously lube that O-ring and then place it into the body using the tool, making sure that they don't come out. You can invert the tool, and then you can see that it'll hold it in place. Now, to insert the piston, we use a O-ring bullet so we don't damage the o-ring that's inside the body lubricate the o-ring bullet 
and then we place the body of, on top of the actual bullet. The tool will help keep those three parts in place as you do this and then make sure they don't slip out. You can take out the bullet and you can see inside that every, everything is in order. Next, the little spring. And now for your cap. This cap has a torque value or specification of 60 inch pounds. Now for the cap, the cap does not have a torque specification because it's metal to metal. Once it reaches contact, uh, you can snug it up a little bit more with the tool, but that's as far as it goes. Very important, the yoke retainer and the O-ring on the yoke retainer must be inserted facing upward. If you try it in another orientation, the O-ring can slip out. This also has a torque value of 21 foot-pounds, which is very important so it doesn't come loose while you're on a dive boat right before you dive. Foot-pounds for this setting is 21 foot-pounds. I already have my torque wrench set for 21 foot-pounds. And here we go. There it is. Done deal. Okay, now I can take it out of the vise and resume. Next, we pressurize the first stage, check our IP. We are at about 135, which is within specs. Uh, 125 to 150 is the specs on this first stage. Cycle it a little bit, make sure we have lock up, it holds good. Looking good. Hey guys, I hope you enjoyed today's video. I had a great time bringing it to you. Any comments or questions that you may have, don't forget, leave it down below. Hit that like button, hit that subscribe. And guys, thanks again for watching. Hope to see you again soon.